So many of my clients are worried about the danger of their dogs and sometimes their cats with the new baby. We see a lot of people who are expectant when they're a few months away having their first bark saying, is my dog safe to have around my baby? But if you look around us here, we have been through that in the last 12 months or so. Here we have my daughter's super cyclonically overactive German Shepherd, Elsa. On this side we have Honey, a little Maltese terrorist, Tasmanian Devil Cross. And right in the middle we have Annabelle, who's currently 11 months of age. Now if you look at Annabelle, she's at a very critical point of development when it comes to assimilation of dogs and children. Because Annabelle is just out of the pool in the last two to three weeks. She's on the verge of standing and on the verge of walking. So around about 11 or 12 months of age, and when we see her with children, and it's a particularly problem time, because now Annabelle can put herself at risk by moving over to these dogs, by grabbing their fur, by touching them. And it's a time when we as grandparents, or my daughter, or my brother, or my son-in-law, will be particularly alert. Now you can, you can just hear in the background that Elsa is a nutcase. She's just <laughs> glorious, she's a darling, she's got a toy in her mouth, she wants to go and play. So are we worried about Elsa interacting with Annabelle? Are we worried about Honey interacting with Annabelle? The answer is now, no, we are not. Were we? Absolutely yes. When my daughter was pregnant and um, we were preparing to bring it, she was preparing to bring Annabelle home, we went through a particular process to make sure it was right. Now the first thing you do is to determine if there is any chance that a dog might be aggressive over a child. And for that you need to rent a child. Not a real one of course, but in this case we use this toddler doll. And there is a particular test we can talk about later called the toddler doll test. And what you do is you toddle this doll towards a dog, generally hitting the dog in the face with the hand of the doll. And if the dog reacts to this doll, then that's not necessarily good news. Elsa. Now, as you can see, Elsa really couldn't give a hoot about this doll. She doesn't think it's a problem at all. This was a test we did earlier. And Elsa did show some sensitivity to this, but not any longer. So the toddler doll test is really important to find out if the dog has any form of worry or aggression. To be quite truthful, it overdiagnoses aggression to children because many dogs will bite this child or be worried about this child when it approaches. Having gone through phase one where you know if a dog is bad or otherwise with a dog, or with a doll, then what you do is you literally get a whole collection of dolls and leave them scattered around the floor. And this is in your home before you bring the baby home. So what you do is you occasionally create a startle response by, very politically incorrectly, kicking the baby along the floor. Not the real baby, please, not Annabelle. But before the baby comes, you just create sudden movements of the doll. So the dogs get desensitised about that. The next phase is to, is to mimic the noises that babies make. You can buy apps that which have baby noises of various types, giggling babies, crying babies, screaming babies. And sometimes you can Bluetooth a speaker, you can Bluetooth speakers nowadays, which you can hide under the clothes of a doll. So the noise from the mobile phone is Bluetooth through to the inside of the child's body. And that's a way of making this as realistic as it can be. And you expose the, 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 uh, the dogs to this pretend baby before your baby comes in with Bluetooth sounds gurgling from underneath the tunic or the dress of the baby. And that's a good way of making the dog used to what will be the new world when the baby comes in. Okay, so that is what you do up until the point of birth. Now at the point of birth, of course, then mum's going to be in hospital, dad's probably going to be moving in and out and having fun. But that's when you bring the smelly things to do with the baby home. You bring home smelly nappies, you bring home dirty bibs, you bring home dirty clothes, and you get the, the dogs used to those funny smells. It'll only take 24 to 48 hours, because mostly mums are in hospital not for that long. But then the big day comes, the day when the baby is brought home. My goodness gracious me. What a worrying time that is. And it was worrying for us as well. Generally what I advise is get mum and the baby in the home first. Don't worry about the dog. Get the dog somewhere else. They should be in the backyard or somewhere else. Get mum established. She needs to have time to get a headspace around the baby. In fact, the baby's just come home. She needs to enjoy that moment and not at that stage be too worried about the dogs. When it fits, whether it could be five minutes later, an hour later or a day later, then introduce the dogs together. And that's generally where you have the, excuse Elsa bark in the background. Elsa, come! Come here, come. Come here, silly dog. We'll talk about baby dads in a moment if you can, but Elsa's a bit frustrated at the moment because she wants to play. 
So when, going back to the point, when Annabelle was brought home as a baby in arms, we introduced Elsa on lead to Annabelle's feet first. So just the distance, something on those arms. We had the hand on the foot and that was put in front of Elsa's nose and Honey's nose. Was there a problem? Absolutely not. Very carefully, we introduced the hand to the baby. And to be quite honest, Elsa and Honey were bored stiff with the baby. There was no drama whatsoever. And that's the way it normally is. Then my daughter and son-in-law relax a little bit, and Annabelle has been growing up for the next 11 months, last, last 11 months. And now, she's a baby who's just ready to boogie, just ready to crawl, just ready to, to run, so we need to be very cautious. A little bit of other things, sometimes we need to create separation of babies from dogs. And this is where a dog pen or a children's play pen can be really useful. And there are two uses of this. Use number one is if you need to get rid of a dog very quickly, you can just jump and dump them into a playpen to get them out of the way. Or the reverse is true, of course. You can do it the other way around. If you need the baby to be out of the way, then you can just dump the baby in the pen as well. So the baby, obviously, with a toy to keep it happy. So playpens or puppy pens can be used for either the baby or for the dog. A word on baby gates. Baby gates, we love them. Absolutely, they're really, really effective. But you've got to choose the right size baby gate. Elsa, come. Obviously, Elsa, come. Obviously, this baby gate, generally speaking, Elsa, come, is of no barrier to Elsa whatsoever. See, she can jump over this baby gate easily. But you can get baby gates that are about high. And she has never, Elsa has never jumped over a baby gate that high. So, a careful choice of baby gates to suit could be really useful. Keep your baby safe. Keep your dog safe. Hope that helps.